All right. Hey, John, welcome back for another quick uh, website teardown, conversion-focused website review if you want to be politically correct about it. Uh, today, as I understand it, we're taking a look at a company called HoneyStinger.com. I don't know anything about these folks, but I'm excited to learn. Um, yeah, looking forward to digging in, and I'll get the homepage fired up. We'll see what they've got going on. All right. Yeah, so we've tangentially been around Honey Stinger over the years. Uh, we've worked with a ton of outdoor and athletic brands. And every time we've been an outdoor retailer, et cetera, we've always met with their e-com team, um, but have yet to actually engage. So um, I thought it was interesting uh, that I hadn't taken a look at their site in some time. And I thought I wanted to see what the situation was. But yeah, it's interesting. Get, jumping right in here, they're immediately going to a pop-up. It's just telling me to stay up to date. Um, doesn't tell me what to put into the field, right? It's just a blank field, so I don't know what to put in there. And there's no way to close it. Like, it's not a clear way to close it. Um, right. So I'm a little confused, like, especially if I'm coming to the site, right? You know, I, I was put here by an ad or I'm looking for some protein bar or something of that sort, and it takes me here. And I'm not really ready to subscribe to an email list, but yet I get a pop-up right away that is not helpful either. Yeah, it, it's not often that uh, I recommend having a discount pop up, but it's probably better if you're going to interrupt somebody's browsing experience within the first 10 seconds um, and they know nothing about your brand, you probably should at least try to offer them 10% off, right? Like, I don't know, this is, I have no idea what Honey Stinger is. Like, I'm not going to give you my email address to stay up to date with news about something that, you know, I'm not even aware of. And like you said, it, it's super minimalistic. Even the submit button uh, isn't, uh, maybe that'll change the color if I uh, try something like thegood.com. All right, now, so it activated. See, there's an activated state there. So that's good. But uh, yeah, I just, I'm afraid to click, as somebody who's driving the screen share, I'm afraid to click on anything else because I don't know how to close it. And so I'm like, right. if I, where do I go to close it? I don't want to drop it before we're done talking about it. But yeah, definitely a lot of uh, room for opportunity here. Yeah, I think if you probably, there you go. Okay. Uh, you know, looking at the rest of this, um, I think, you know, it, right now at the top left, um, they're starting with like the delivery timeline messaging. Uh, we've seen a lot of that over the last year. I can tell you that consumers really don't care about that information until they get into the checkout and shipping process. And then it's good to let them know because you're setting expectations. But upfront, it's really not helpful and it's a distraction, especially when that's so much text, right? It's, you know, we're almost into three lines. It's like a whole paragraph up there. Um, I do like the free shipping, although I'm not really sure why there is a code needed. Um, you know, really what I would just recommend here is just have free shipping over $50. Should be easy to bake into the system without making consumers go through our code. Uh, we do test a lot of messages up in those notification bars. Free shipping is the only one that moves the needle. Uh, so it's good to have it. But you know, there's a lot of skepticism with consumers when they see that they have to have a code. They have to remember, okay, free sting in order to get free shipping. Um, it's just like, hey, I'm gonna order 50 bucks. Give me the free shipping, right? Yeah, I think it'd be more compelling too if you on the during the checkout process when you have kind of the presentation of their entire shopping cart contents to say hey your total is 35 dollars add you know another 15 to qualify mm -hmm. for free shipping and that's probably a better use of real estate than something like this even if this is sticky to your point it should probably just be automatically calculated and applied based on the car total cart value and then you should prompt them to add a little bit more to qualify for that if they haven't already um, I love the I love the video background. Mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic and showing all the different elements of the bar like this is super cool and probably wasn't cheap. So I think it's money well spent because it's I mean, it's making me hungry. Um, but also I noticed like the navigation's a little busy. So I'm curious, what do you think about yeah. this like hero navigation section? Well, let's start with the hero and then we'll jump into the nav on this hero. I would reverse the order of those headlines because the hero really needs to be all about your main value proposition, right? This is where you're gonna connect with people who are new to your brand, right? Like, so for you, for instance, James, who might not be as familiar with Honey Stinger, that's where your eyes gonna gravitate because of the video and you wanna learn a little bit really quickly. Are you in the right place? Can they help solve your pain or need, right? And that's all you need to know out of this. So new Cracker Bars does not tell me anything about solving a pain or need. You're talking about yourself. That's what you as a brand want to promote. I would say in the small text, new cracker bars, then underneath that in large, now with 10 grams of plant protein. 
on someone who, you know, I, my nutritionist has me trying to get 200 grams of protein a day, which is impossible. Like I would love, you know, I'll down 10 of these bars, get hundred grams, right? right. I mean, but I'm saying like, that's pretty good out of a bar to get 10 grams. So having that in there, I think is something to, to, you know, reverse. And that would really tell you people what the main value proposition is here. Um, and then shop now is fine for CTA here. Uh, generally, you know, we recommend a low uh, intent call to action, something like learn more, view details over buy now, because people may not be ready to buy at this point. Um, shop now might be a good middle ground for that. Um, yeah, I'm curious. I'm going to hover over the button and see the destination. Okay, so it is taking us directly to the cracker bars, it looks like, which was going to be my next question. If that went to a generic category page for like all bars, that would feel maybe like a missed opportunity to mm -hmm. me at least. But I'm glad to see it. That's going straight to that destination product. Right. Let's talk How do you about feel about heavy... promoting a, a new product? Like mm -hmm. they clearly have a lot going on. I'm guessing they have yeah multiple product types. So I, I'm sure maybe this is a limited test. They're only going to run this for 30 days. But it feels to me like you might want to use this hero section to show kind of the breadth of your offerings, especially for cold traffic. But I don't know if we've tested anything differently on our client sites and, and found that offering a specific product like your flagship product mm -hmm. or something new like they've done here is actually a better uh, option from a conversion perspective. The best option is to not feature a single product at all and instead focus on what your brand's value proposition is. Again, going back to the main reason people are at your site is to understand if they can solve your brand, can solve their pain or need, and if they can to convert as quickly and easily as possible, right? So you're trying to just really quickly within a couple of seconds, help people understand if they're in the right place. And that's why most people who are coming here are going to be looking for energy or protein, right? Or in the mix of the two. And so that's why I was recommending if you have to recommend use this product, we talked about how great the video is. Uh, then at that point you would want to lead with the plant protein instead of new cracker bars being so big. That makes sense. Um, okay, so how about this primary navigation then? Uh, a lot going on. I know we try to keep these to like five elements maybe, which they've done, but then they also have my account, my shopping cart. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing this is some kind of store locator for retailers and then just a generic search. So what's your general first impression here? Well, out of the five main items in the navigation, four of them are about Honey Stinger and only one is about the consumer. That's a huge mess. And we see this quite a bit where brands want to talk about themselves so much that they take over the navigation. The main reason of your site is, again, it's to sell products, right? It's your best salesperson. So sell product. Uh, consumers who want to know more about the brand, about the events you might be doing, about us, like they're going to find that information on your site, right? And it needs to be in a supporting fashion where consumers are diving into those um, decision points, right? So if I'm in a category or a product detail page and I want to know more about why I should choose Honey Stinger, great, have that information there. Um, but I feel like we're answering a lot of questions that consumers aren't having at this stage. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. This kind of feels like a case of, you know, the leadership team got into a conference room and the head of marketing said, we got to get the events on there. We're trying to push these events. We need attendance. We need to sell tickets, whatever. We need participation and engagement. So it's got to go in the primary nav because that's where it's going to get all the eyeballs, right? Um, right. But maybe from the sales perspective, that's not the best option because it's just another data point to kind of present visual overwhelm or to let someone go down a rabbit hole of being distracted mm -hmm. by something that is not transactional in any way. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I'm not a, I'm not hugely opposed to the, we call these mega navs in the way that the shop is coming down right now. Although I do think if you just took those what, one, two, three, four, five, six different product items and made that your main navigation, as a consumer coming to your site, I'm going to know exactly what you sell. I know that you have energy waffles, energy chews, bars, gels, and you sell honey, which makes sense. Um, and, I, and then you have apparel and accessories. And I look at all of that and I know you have those products and I immediately know I'm in the right place and how you can help me. And then I guarantee what's going to happen consumers will dive into the one that they feel is best for them right off the bat. And so you would see way more engagement on the navigation as well. 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I, what I do like is the visual imagery, the representation of the products. I love when brands use that because as a shopper, it just makes it a little bit more tangible for me. Like if I can't go to a store right now and pick this up and hold it and see um, if it's substantial enough to like quell my appetite while I'm working out or whatever, this is the next best thing. I get some sense mm -hmm. of what I'm buying here and whether or not it's going to be portable or, you know, whatever. And so I just, I kind of like that as an added element because a big wall of text here would not be nearly as compelling. Yeah, for sure. And when you roll, you know, if we were to move this whole navigation level up one and make these the main and navigation items, uh, it would be pretty easy on the, on the rollover to show that image as well as the links below. Um, so, you know, that's something I would definitely test. We've run tests like that before with imagery in the nav and it always has performed better. So it's yeah. something to think okay. about for sure. Um, let's check out the rest of the homepage really quick. So right below the hero section, the next thing they're showing is kind of this 50, 50 layout with featuring the waffles and mm -hmm. performance shoes. Uh, my first reaction to this is, you know, I don't know what you want me to do next, right? The pictures are beautiful. The food looks delicious. I clearly understand the flavor profile here and the gummy nature of this and all that kind of stuff. This is very obviously a link, the text, but like, I, I don't know. I mean, um, I could see somebody who maybe isn't a digital native, right? Like uh, not really knowing what you want them to do here. If you want them to go and explore, there's no call to action, really. There's the name of the product and the entire tile is clickable. But outside of that, um, yeah, I don't know what you want me to do here. Yep, missing a clear call to action, and um, you know it needs to to match the call to action that's up above in terms of look and feel. So be consistent with the design of your call to action. So have that same type of button where it says shop now. Put something similar under each of these, and uh, you'll drive a lot more engagement on these. You do need to tell consumers what you want them to do. Believe it or not. <laughs> And several times over in a lot of cases. Yes. Um, one other thing I like about this section is they seem to have approximated the real world size of the product in the imagery, right? So I'm guessing if you lay these two products side by side on the table, as far as the size of them, they'd be about the same as they look like on the screen here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I mean, that's a minor detail, but like uh, so many people will take something small, like a pack of gum and show this giant photo of it. And like gum's a bad example because you know that's not gonna be big, but like these chews, you don't know if there are 25 chews in there or five. Mm -hmm. And to lay these out next to each other and basically say, you know, I can picture this in my pantry and I kind of know what portion size I'm buying. And then mm -hmm. I can use that if I click through to the product detail page to figure out if it's worth it for me based on price or if it's like several of these packets of performance shoes together, then I can kind of figure out if this is enough value for me to make a purchasing decision. Love it. Yeah, that's exactly right. And the photography is really high quality. Like I, I think the branding design, the visual design of this site is right on. Uh, they're doing a great job with it. It's not necessarily getting in the way of conversions at this point. And it, as you're saying, it's answering a lot more questions than it's creating. Yeah. One thing I'm noticing, just I can see the next section peeking out here, but just to show the scrolling nature of this, like these full bleed images and sections, like visually, I'm a little overwhelmed. Like I need some mm -hmm. white space. I need some breathing room. There's a lot of different textures. You've got moving elements here. You've got this dotted texture and you've got some solid uh, color backgrounds here. And then we get into like lifestyle photography and leaves and stuff like that. I don't know. It's just, it's overwhelming for me from a visual perspective. And I could see that like if somebody doesn't abandon their browsing session, I could see them kind of like just panic clicking through to a product page yeah. just to see something that's not bright and colorful and you know, these, some of these even, I would say maybe clash a little bit. I'm not a designer, but like when you show leaves next to solid textures, like to me, that's a pretty jarring transition to my mm -hmm. eye. Um, but yeah, it looks like they're going to feature some, maybe some written content or some video content here. This is kind of like their educational blog angle. Um, so conceptually that's where we're going next, but my experience so far scrolling through this was like, man, this is a lot of bright, bold visuals one after the other. And I feel like I need a rest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I can definitely see that. A lot of times design does make things overwhelming in that way. Um, one thing to say about this here, tips and tricks, driving people into that content from your homepage, not overly helpful. Um, that is top of funnel content that is great to get people to your site for SEO purposes or to put out on social, et cetera. But once you get them to your site, they're deeper in the funnel. They're now at the second step. So you don't want to send them back up the funnel. And that's what highlighting this content, especially this is what the fourth, I guess, right? would be the fourth main uh, piece of content here. Um, mm -hmm. And it's really only the second main call to action. 
so, you know, thinking about that, it's really given high, high uh, prominence in terms of content on the page. I would redo, I would move this down the page uh, quite a bit. Especially with the lack of any call to action here, really. Mm -hmm. Let's assume somebody didn't realize that they could click on this and they just scrolled right past it. Then your second CTA is effectively a blog article. And right. that's probably not ideal. Um, but I do love that they're keeping it timely and relevant, right? During social distancing, keep moving, you know, that message, I, I think it shows that the brand is engaged and they're not just like locking things in and coasting. Um, they're mm -hmm. trying to stay relevant. They're trying to, trying to stay timely. They're customizing their messages to the current situation around their customers. So I like that. Um, then it looks like they're going to feature a couple of what I'm guessing are sponsored athletes since they get enough visual prominence to have their names assigned to all of this. Uh, what I, my reaction would be maybe people who our Honey Stinger fans or customers know these folks. I don't. Um, so maybe just some kind of subtext. It says like Jared Ward, uh, I don't know, a professional try or Iron Man, right? Or something like mm -hmm. that. Like that, that would be a little bit more compelling to me as an average consumer versus just, I don't know who Jared Ward is. Is he a YouTuber? You know, is he an Instagram influencer? Is he some kind of TV host that likes it and happens like running when he's not working? You know, I'm a little bit lost here. Yeah, same here. And the hive doesn't really tell me much um, about what they are and how they benefit the consumer by looking at this information. So um, agree with you there. Plus, there's no call to action. So what am I supposed to do? Just look at these people and have their name or we really yeah, I mean, they're not clickable people? as far as I can tell. Um, you yeah. can you can go to the hive and that's look like it's going to take us to uh, forward slash athletes. So mm -hmm. um, I think the assumption about them being sponsored athletes is probably correct. I like right. that it's, you know, kind of branded the hive honey stinger. We've got this common thread of bees and honey coming through here. So I like that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I probably wouldn't even click on this. I'd probably keep moving, you know. Um, yeah. And then we get down to the bottom. It looks like uh, they want folks to go follow them on all forms of social media. And then we have a pretty simple footer to round out the homepage here. Right. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, in terms of the footer, there's a few missed opportunities. One, you're, you're driving people directly into social, which is, you know, really a, a chance to lose them more than anything else. Uh, typically, we'd want to see that downplayed a little bit more in there. You're also missing easy contact information. I see that there's an envelope and a phone number there. Um, but I would redesign this footer a little bit because the biggest prominence is signing up for an email. At least this is more clear The enter your email and let's go. Um, but you're still missing a few things uh, around that. And then the biggest missed opportunity out of this, relist your main product categories in your footer. People scroll down here. They're obviously interested in your brand. Let's show them all the product categories again so that they don't have to scroll all the way back up to the nav to be able to get that content. Um, so just make it super easy for them to continue that purchase path journey. And uh, a couple, oh, sorry, I was going to say a couple things that I, I see here that confuse me or I think could be maybe a little bit better is this phone icon. Like what number is that? Is that customer support? Mm -hmm. Is that some kind of exactly. SMS marketing opt in? You know, like who am I contacting there and, and why would I want to use that? Uh, that jumped out of me. This might be another opportunity to bring the store locator concept mm -hmm. back down into the footer because a lot of times I think people will look for that down in the bottom, you know, find us at a store near you, maybe a GNC or mm -hmm. something like that. I would expect to see that here. Maybe even with a map widget would be kind of cool. Um, and if it had automatic location to figure out spots near me, if I authorized it, that'd be even cooler. Um, yeah. And then I'm, I'm, my memory is being triggered here because I did check out the site uh, a couple of days ago when you shared it. And I noticed, I think, that this contact form is pretty Ooh. ugly compared to the rest of the page. Um, mm. So, yeah, I just I don't, I don't know why this seems right like an oversight. Suite, their CRM so or ERP. Right. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think there's definitely some work that could be done there. That seems like that was the easy. Let's do this for now and get it up there and we'll worry about it later. Um, right. But that's not compelling to a consumer who has a challenge. Um, right. So, yeah, I think, you know, the other thing is having uh, just a generic email, right? And, and in the bottom right-hand corner is where you should have all of that contact information in the hierarchy of how you want them to get a hold of you. And then also, you know, Honey Stinger is big enough to have a headquarters address. Put that on here. A physical address can go so far for uh, trust. And that's really all it is, is a trust signifier. No one's going to show up knocking at the door, um, but it's really important to have that. And then, you know, in there, you can have customer service and uh, all those utility links that are down at the bottom, pro program, et cetera. That's where people are going to go looking for that. So um, it's good to have that. Um, so basically, I would redo this, nav this uh, footer and all the navigation in it. 
and um and i think there's a lot of opportunity here overall so um this has been great james i appreciate uh taking the time to look at this with me of course yeah thank you i think we found a lot of opportunity here but they're doing a lot of things well too the design's beautiful product photography is beautiful uh copywriting is is on point and has a lot of personality so um great work honey stinger but you know hopefully a couple of these insights are helpful for you and 